Hi, and welcome back. It is two o'clock uh, as we enter the third part of today's program, Feasibility, Funding and Incentives. My favorite title today because it's kind of self-explanatory. Is it feasible, what we're talking about today, and uh, what can we ex expect from the policymakers and the commercial markets? To moderate this two-part session, uh, please welcome Chief Analyst at the Group Sustainability Division at Nordea Bank, the brilliant Tina Margrethe Saltet. Hello and good afternoon. Funding is absolutely vital to get this business going. So for the next hour, we're going to talk about how to find, fund the development of hydrogen. The first half an hour, we're going to talk about uh, more the public funding uh, and how far has the fund, public funding gone to, um, to build uh, the development of hydrogen. For the second part, we're going to talk a bit more about how the uh, commercial money could also contribute to this development. So, my first panel, let's uh, say welcome. And on my right-hand side here, uh, we have Hege Ökla. She is the CEO of NCE Maritime Cleantech. Well, welcome to you. Thank you. Uh, to my very right here. Uh, we have Trun Moengen. He is the manager of Pilot E. Welcome. Thank you. And on the screen, or uh, on link, and I think he is at Trondheim, in Trondheim. That's right, very good. Uh, that is uh, Stefan Müller Holst, and he's the chairman, vice president marketing Norwegian Hydrogen Forum at Sintef. Welcome to you. Thank you. And uh, to get you straight into the conversation, uh, Stefan, I think, um, you know, the Norwegian Hydrogen Forum was funded already in 1996. So that's starts to be quite a long time ago. Um, but where our, uh, exactly how far have we got now in 2021? That's right. Uh, the Norwegian Hydrogen Forum was founded in, in, in 1996 and we celebrate our 25th anniversary uh, this year. Uh, we have grown, we have been part of the uh, uh, last 25 years of development of hydrogen technologies and we are currently um, representing 25 members uh, from industry, from uh, academia, and as well as the NGOs and, and public entities, which are uh, then altogether our members. Thank you. And um, Hege, uh, you are the CEO of, of World Leading Cluster for Maritime Solutions. Can you please tell us a bit about your hydrogen project? Yes, we have uh, several ongoing uh, hydrogen projects in the cluster. Three of them uh, are EU funded uh, and here we are developing and demonstrating full-scale energy systems. Uh, two of them with uh, hydrogen and the third is with ammonia uh, running on fuel cells. And we are doing this uh, with a consortium of partners from all over Europe. But uh, the dominant industrial partners are Norwegian. And I think that also demonstrates that we in Norway are ahead uh, of, of this development. So uh, these three projects, uh, as I mentioned, is EU funded. But in addition, we are also in the cluster working on developing supply chains for uh, green liquid hydrogen with uh, industry partners like BKK, Equinor and Elikid. Thank you. And uh, then, uh, Trun, um, can you please explain? Because I think, you know, Pilot E, you know it very well, and, but not, maybe not all of us know exactly what you're doing. So could you please just tell us briefly what, what you're doing with this program? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do my very best. Uh, Pilot E is what we call a, a mission-oriented funding scheme, uh, trying to combine uh, existing funding schemes and, and funding instruments uh, from different governmental bodies. So we are trying to combine uh, funding schemes from the Research Council of Norway, Innovation Norway and ENOVA, into packages that makes it possible for rather complex projects, large projects, to 
to be funding all the way from ID uh, until uh, the project is finished. So it's a kind of uh, well one stop shop for funding. So how far, uh, or how much do you think actually the government get out of these projects? Well, hopefully they, they get what they, they want. Uh, the, the main reason for for establishing this uh, instrument is to to uh, uh, speed up the process from, from research and results from research into activities and, and into, uh, get to get these solutions into the market. So uh, when when funding the this, the different schemes as such and and then uh, establishing a pilot E, uh, I think uh, they get uh, uh, faster uh, projects uh, and also perhaps better results. At least that's what we're trying to do. Hege, how important is actually pilot E and similar uh, support? From it's, government. it's very important and also relevant uh, to our projects and the project which I mentioned which uh, is about developing a new supply chain for liquid green hydrogen that is actually funded by Pilot E and here you bring uh, partners from uh, research institutes uh, together with the industry and also the end users and I think that is uh, the brilliant thing about Pilot E is that it involves all partners from uh, uh, research uh, and uh, up to the end users. And we have also had uh, experience with Pilot E from the very beginning. One of the first Pilot E projects was an uh, electrical uh, passenger ferry. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that having this good dialogue between us as a cluster organization and the different uh, funding programs, like for instance Pilot E, uh, that also contributes to developing this funding schemes uh, in addition. So. So, John, how, how closely do you follow up on the projects you have? Well, we, we try to follow them uh, as close as, as possible, uh, but it's important to remember that the responsibility for, for, for uh, bringing the, the projects from start to end is, of course, uh, the, the industry and the partners in the consortia. I think the most important thing we do is to make it possible for them to start uh, and to, to combine these financing instruments uh, and, and also by that uh, making re well reducing the financial risk uh, because they don't have to apply several times uh, as they go, go along the innovation chain. So uh, I think we have done our most important job when we have started the project and hopefully selected the, the best project as well. Uh, and, and then uh, the, the consortia led by, by Hege and, and her industry and others, uh, I think the, the most, the, they are the most important, of course, uh, players when it comes to, to bringing the, the, the project all the way to the end. Stefan, um, we have seen that hydrogen is absolutely at the top of the agenda with the EU at the moment. And we know, we know that they are also sponsoring a lot of projects to get started. How can we be sure that hydrogen is the right thing to go for in Norway? <laughs> That's not a simple question. We've seen several large and, uh, uh, strategies and, and, and important reports uh, indicating that uh, very clearly that uh, hydrogen is uh, a sector uh, coupler uh, and it really needed supplement to uh, both uh, electricity as energy carrier but not least to replace fossil fuels. So. Of course, there are always uncertainties when we enter a energy transition, which we are currently uh, starting at. But I'm convinced and we see uh, steadily more nations coming into the envelope of pushing these solutions. Of course, hydrogen is one solution, but for all, if you want to cover all the uh, transport applications, you might also need, as mentioned in the previous session, uh, ammonia as fuel for some applications. So how far have we got to Norway compared to EU and other places around the world when it comes to hydrogen and ammonia as a fuel for shipping? Uh, I've been on the board for Hydrogen Europe for 13 years now and, and I follow the European development very closely. What is the fact uh, is that way back 15 years ago, the attention to hydrogen and, and, and fuel cell technologies was much higher in Europe than it was in 
in, in, in Norway. But uh, we have the uh, prerequisites. We have the energy sources. We have industry. And we also have the, the, the funding schemes in Norway. And uh, not least, the, the very high ambitions for reducing uh, emissions from from uh, maritime transport, cutting that by half by 2030, which is really ambitious. So I think we might in Norway play a, a pivotal role and a key role towards uh, decarbonizing uh, shipping as a, as a sector. Uh, how important do you see it, um, uh, that the government are sponsoring these projects now? It is evident that we, we need uh, in the first place, the ambitious targets, but we need also to accept that uh, these new fuels and these new solutions are not inherently uh, competitive from day one. And, and we might also expect in the years to come that we, uh, we need to pay more for fuels and for the, uh, to achieve the zero emission solutions at least for many years until these commodities like ammonia, uh, and, and, and hydrogen, as well as the technologies, are um, being competitive to what we would call the incumbent or conventional technologies like combustion engines. Hey, you, how, how far have you got when it comes to scaling on this? Are we still at the pilot or are we starting now to scale it up and could you know, benefit from uh, large, or large projects to get down the, um, to get down the cost? Yeah, uh, uh, we have covered several phases when it comes to the scaling. Thing, but uh, I would also like to add uh, that we have quite innovative ship owners uh, in Norway uh, and in the cluster, and we also have uh, a, a public purchasing uh, muscle uh, with uh, the Norwegian Road Administration, which has set uh, criteria in their contracts for new ferries, that it shall be hydrogen or LNG, um, but the latest project is about liquid hydrogen. And this project is now uh, at um, um, a building stage. Uh, the vessel is being built at, uh, as we speak, uh, and this vessel will be up and running uh, during late fall this year. So. Yes, we are uh, not only researching and developing, we are in fact now starting to operate vessels uh, running on hydrogen. Uh, and in the other projects I mentioned, um, we are working on scaling up the fuel cells uh, from uh, uh, 70 kilowatt hours up to uh, 3 megawatts. So it's a large job to, to be done to do this. Uh, but in the consortium we have uh, uh, partners representing uh, the technology providers developing the fuel cells, but we also have a catapult program here in Norway uh, and the Sustainable Energy Catapult Center is a test facility where these uh, different fuel cells can, are being uh, tested and validated and then uh, put, uh, put on board uh, the ship so that we are 100% sure that the technology is working, it's safe, uh, resilient. Uh, and uh, I think these projects um, with the different partners on board can uh, um, yeah, realize such uh, um, yeah, advanced uh, technology development. Hmm. But uh, Trun, uh, who's actually applying for this uh, kind of support? Do you see, is, the, um, is it a game changer for the old uh, industry or are there new companies coming in to apply for, for support to develop hydrogen? Well, we see, uh, see both, both these types of so industry uh, and partners uh, coming up. Uh, uh, of course, uh, one important criteria for, for being funded as a pilot e project and at all being able to, to to, uh, to go along in this uh, heavy development uh, process, you, you need to have strength, financial strength and, and technology and knowledge. So, uh, so normally you would, we would like to see uh, large companies uh, with uh, the smaller companies with uh, their, their spe special specialties and, and, and new developments uh, combined. Uh, and uh, several of our, our most fruitful and best projects have been in this kind of combination. But we, we do see also startups 
where the, the project is the company, so to say, uh, applying for and trying to, to get funding as a pilot project. But normally they would like to, they would need to, to, to uh, interact and to, to, to partner up with, uh, with uh, larger companies. So we, the best projects seems to be where we have the combinations of, of uh, large, older companies trying to, to go along with a more green way. Uh, and, uh, and uh, smaller companies with, with a very narrow uh, specialty or, or technology. So are you the matchmaker or how do they meet? Well, sometimes we are actually. Yeah. Um, we see that, uh, uh, well, Pilot E is, is the authorities' a way to, to say, uh, hey, here, come on, uh, let's try to, to solve these missions together. Uh, we are putting some money on the table from the governmental side, uh, and we need, we'll, we'd like you to, to, to come up with ideas and projects. And I think that, uh, well, when we started Pilot E, uh, the, what we tried to do was to make things happen faster than they normally will. Uh, afterwards, we see that uh, an, an even equal important uh, aspect is the fact that when three public authorities are standing on stage saying uh, we, we want to put money into this, we need you to, to, to take part in this uh, Dugnad, uh, please, uh, please come. Uh, we see that it's a very mobilizing initiative and we have been mobilizing lots of, uh, of projects uh, since we started five years ago. So uh, the fact that we are uh, developing uh, our missions and, and uh, calling out, having the different kind of mission-oriented calls, we see that based on that, uh, different players find together and, uh, and come up with projects. So yeah, sometimes we are matchmakers. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about a very, um, a very important part here as well, the infrastructure. Uh, is that being developed at the same time, or how is that, or where are we now when, when we talk about infrastructure? Well, that is maybe the most challenging part of, of this. Because, um, uh, trying to match uh, the suppliers of hydrogen with the projects from the industry, that is quite challenging because uh, they, have, um, they are at a different level and have... Um, um, different challenges, uh, let's so to say. Um, we see that, for instance, in one, pro in one of the pilot projects, um, we needed uh, green hydrogen because that was one of the criteria from EU uh, that the project couldn't have black or blue hydrogen. It needed to be to be green. Uh, but uh, this project uh, was a pilot project going on for four years. But the suppliers of hydrogen, they needed to have um, a good forecast of, of the demand and, uh, and had to had, uh, have a customer committing itself for up to 10 years. And so having those different uh, needs uh, and uh, criteria uh, meeting it uh, at a very early point when this market is uh, evolving, that's quite uh, challenging. Uh, and um, the risk is that uh, the industry project stops because uh, we couldn't find a supplier of hydrogen who was willing to set up a production facility for such a short period uh, or at the price which was uh, acceptable at a very early stage. So this is quite demanding and we need, uh, we need a public uh, support to, or um, some kind of uh, orchestrating uh, to have those different players uh, uh, acting together uh, so that we can start developing uh, a full-scale value chain. So Trun, how do you see this then? The, um how could you help Heg with, to build this infrastructure with your support? Well, to, to some degree we, we can. Uh, uh, we are not allowed by the state aid regulation to, to finance uh, direct investments in the infrastructure. Uh, but we can uh, help uh, developing new solutions for infrastructure and components being part of that infrastructure. So when it comes to developing it uh, and, and funding it all the way and up till pilot installations, well, we can help. 
but when it comes to building the infrastructure as well uh, as such, uh, one need to take uh, other tools uh, into consideration. Uh, yeah. So, Stefan, uh, how have you been working with the infrastructure? We have been part of us both as a center and, and uh, as a representative for Hydrogen Europe. We have been involved in that uh, financing uh, from Hydrogen Europe and, and the pro program. We have been financing a lot of uh, projects that are uh, focused on hydrogen production, for instance. Uh, the uh, uh, so whole supply chain for maritime applications are uh, in a very high, at a very high attention these days, but that's been growing dramatically over maybe three, four years. Uh, so uh, we have contributed through the program uh, in Europe um, for to, to hydrogen production at large. But what is more evidently, even, uh, evidently now is that we, uh, or evident, uh, is that now we see in the early phase, we, phases, we need some corridors. We need a couple of harbors. We need some some bunkering facilities, making uh, zero emission shipping possible possible at all. Meaning that we are now looking also for the uh, uh, the more flagship projects, as uh, as Hege already mentioned. But the overall projects where you have both the uh, the vessels and the bunkering and uh, production facilities in, in a, one project where we think that's, that's a, the right way to go. Uh, because we, we will, it would take maybe five to 10 years to build a complete infrastructure for hydrogen and or ammonia. So we need to get started with certain corridors in Europe. Do you think or, or do you th feel that the Norwegian um, government is doing enough uh, with public support to actually get the Norwegian hydrogen sector up and standing and be competitive in the European market? Over time, <clears throat> the Norwegian uh, government has supported uh, hydrogen with substantial funding. Um, we are now, of course, very eager to see the new uh, Norwegian hydrogen roadmap, which will be launched in a week's time, because uh, that's the Norwegian hydrogen strategy was very general. It was more like a description of of what we the potentials are, but while the uh, promised uh, Norwegian hydrogen roadmap is now uh, uh, supposed to be outlining how we should reach the very ambitious goals. So, while we at Sinter, for instance, has uh, more than fifty percent of our projects in in European programs because the funding has been much better in uh, in Europe for us. Uh, I think uh, Norway is, is uh, now accelerating, and I'm really looking forward uh, to see that roadmap in a week's time. Yeah, I guess we all do, <laughs> uh, because it would be very interesting to see um, how we could actually compete uh, within the now growing world market. I think we are going to ask uh, our um, partner in Sweden here if he has got any questions for us, Craig. Do you have anybody sent us um, some questions? No, unfortunately, the, it's very quiet on the question front. I think everybody's just uh, digesting everything that's being say, <laughs> said. So there's no questions on the question front. But I have one, if I may, having listened intently to what's being said. We're, we're talking a lot of this funding, and I, I think Hege uh, alluded to it as did Trond, and there's a lot of regional funding that we are, we are talking about. But I just want to take this discussion into the larger picture because we look at national and regional funding, but we talk about international shipping. Is there the danger that we focus too heavily on the small vessels and the ferries? There's a lot of funding around ferries and short sea that is giving very direct results to national funding bodies. But what about the transformation and the transition and the funding into the international shipping sphere? We've got very large bulk carriers, container ships, um, and um, liquid carriers that need to be part of this transformation as well. So I'd like to hear their thoughts, by all three panellists' thoughts, if I could, on how they see what's happening in their uh, park ha being able to transfer over into the international arena. Maybe I could start. Yeah. Uh, uh, the European Commission has, uh, over the last two, three years, really been pushing maritime applications and 
being a representative from, from Norway in this respect on the board for, of the uh, program, uh, I've been very pleased to see uh, how, uh, for instance, the three EU funded projects that, that uh, Hege is mentioning uh, has been funded through the program. I think see short sea shipping as a stepping stone because we are developing larger systems. We need to start small to, to once uh, uh, be uh, able to fully also uh, combat the, uh, the emissions from the, the larger vessels. So I think this is a natural way. We should, of course, never uh, lose out of sight the, the, the actual uh, sum of the emissions from the larger ships because that's uh, terrific, a significant part of, of the whole picture. But I think it makes sense to start uh, smaller and then grow, uh, of course, uh, while uh, we also will see, uh, as mentioned by Vatsila in the previous session, that combustion engines are not uh, ruled out uh, in a five or 10 years time. They are very efficient and you might burn uh, fossil free fuels in them. So we are not only talking about the new technologies, we are also talking about existing incumbent technologies that can provide a substantial contribution to the emission uh, cuts we need to make. Hege, do you want to continue? Yes, uh, uh, I think in addition to what Stefan is saying is, is that um, we see in our dialogue with politicians, either if it's uh, at the national level or it's at IMO level, uh, they are very concerned about the technology development. They need to see that the technology is being proven demonstrated, uh, and demonstrated full scale. And then we see that the regulations can come into place. So we have a very important role now in this uh, coming three years to demonstrate uh, the different fuels in different energy systems uh, so that regulations can come into place. We had this discussion uh, in uh, uh, regarding the World Heritage Fjords, where there have, has been set up uh, zero emission regulations from 2026. And in our discussions with the Norwegian politicians, they were quite concerned that uh, the fjords were closed down, that there would not be any ships uh, being able to enter the fjords. Uh, but uh, on our hand, we pointed out that we have many ongoing demonstration, demonstration projects and uh, these can be uh, um, uh, developed and commercialized if the politicians are being very clear on their goals and saying that we will not postpone this, we will stay on, on our goal on 2026, because then this, uh, invest, these investments will be, do being, uh, be done. Uh, and I think that is, uh, will be the same also for international shipping, that we need to transfer uh, learnings and uh, technology as far as we can, can, can go from the short sea shipping into to other sectors. Um, for instance, as I mentioned, we are working with uh, ammonia uh, fuel cells on an offshore vessel. And maybe this can be the solution for deep sea. Um, we don't know yet, but that is an ongoing project which is going to be finalized in 2023-2024. In yeah, because we have a short window here. Yeah. I think I read in the I latest IEA report, International Energy Agency, that we need to have um, most of the technology out by 2030, and then it goes to tenfold by that time. So I guess we are in a hurry. Do you think we will make it? We need to make it. Yeah. We, we don't have any choice. We need to make it, and we need to um, we need to demonstrate and develop these systems for a range of different vessels doing a range of different operations. So it's a huge business potential. Uh, so if we can see it that way, uh, we can be quite optimistic on behalf of uh, the maritime industry that there are so many opportunities. Uh, we just need to grab them. And very short at the end here, do you want to come and comment on Craig's question? Well, I, I agree with what has been said. Uh, the short sea shipping and the coastal traffic is a stepstone and, and we are now moving into to the, to deep sea. And I think we'll already see what will be uh, brought uh, uh, along uh, these uh, uh, challenges as well. So uh, it will come. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. And uh, thank you very much to all of you, Hege, Trun and Stefan. Tough enough to be on a spacecraft. Light enough to be in vehicles. Some call us pioneers or enablers. Our composites technology is at the heart of what we do. And we do it with passion. Because we believe that clean air is a right, not a privilege. The maritime industry is facing new challenges. The time to act is now. Hydrogen from renewable energy, combined with our fuel cells, will support you decarbonizing your vessels without compromising the performance. Our marine fuel cell system is developed to meet the highest marine safety standards. And most importantly, we can provide you with megawatt fuel cell solutions today. With us as a partner, your vessels will have high performance, efficiency, and safe operations with true zero emission. It's time to move to a sustainable shipping. Join the next big wave today.